Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to State of the Federation. I'm your host, Delta Angel Fire, and today is August the 19th. This will be the 12th episode of State of the Federation, and we'll be talking about the NX-01, which you can see I already have up right here. We'll also be talking about some of the events from Gen Con, the strategy events, not really the other events that some people might have heard of. And a couple more OP2 reports. But before we get to that, Tucker, how are you doing tonight, sir? You still with us? Yes, I am still with you. Hi, folks. My name's Tucker, coming to you from the sunny streets of Los Angeles, California. I am stuck in traffic and calling in from Skype through my phone. Don't <laughs> worry, all you police officers at home. I am hands-free and combined, uh, complying with all local and state ordinances. But if my connection drops out, that's why. <laughs> yeah, make sure you drive safe. I, I, I can see when you're driving in, well, not really driving, but more like crawling on a crowded freeway. That might not be too bad, but. Yeah, no, it's, trust me, it's crawling out here. Uh, rush hour through downtown, straight in the middle of Los Angeles. So I. I do not have much to do. However, I am not going to be looking at pictures of previews while I'm driving. <laughs> That'll be good. But yeah, just remember, drive safe. And in the meantime, we can start getting on with the Enterprise. Sound good? The Enterprise. Sounds good to me. Excellent. All right. So let's get started. We have, for those of you who have seen the preview on StarTrek.com, we are going to be reviewing the Enterprise NX-01, isn't it's it been beautiful? been a long road. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, do you have faith of the heart? I have faith faith of the heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is going to be the NX-01, the titular flagship of the Enterprise series, long before the, uh, the setup of the Federation, but still uh, technically a Federation-aligned ship pretty cool little little odd uh the, a lot of people were speculating that since the vulcans weren't federation the enterprise wouldn't be either and that'd be that would be really weird but i guess i guess we went with the uh the easy way out of this one it's like yeah it's it's pre-federation counts as federation i guess yeah and hey as a fed player count me thrilled i have a swarm ship <laughs> oh yes indeed all right so Stats for the NX-01, looking very similar to uh, even the Praetis or the uh, the Bajoran Interceptor. For 16 points for the named version, and assuming it's the same for the generic, is going mm -hmm. to have you have two attack, three agility, three hull, and no shields. Now the only thing we don't know yet is we don't know the firing arcs and we do not know the movement dial. But that's actually not true. Um, no. A spoil yes, a spoiler picture from Gen Con shows that the NX-01 has a 90 degree forward and a 90 degree rear arc. Oh, very nice. Also, um, in the article itself, it mentions. I I, I noticed this. I'm not looking at it. I promise. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that. It says that the Enterprise does not have a four forward, but it has a two and a three come about. Gotcha. Yeah, it says that it has no shields, a movement dial that tops out at three, and two mm -hmm. and three come about maneuvers will make the forgive the meager warp five capabilities of the ship. Got a got a sharp eye there, Tucker, for for having memorized this already. Well, I mean, something like that, you remember it. I mean, oh yeah. Good lord, no four, but two and three come abouts this isn't going to play like any ship the federation has yeah this is de it's definitely going to be different it's going to be it sounds like it's going to be kind of close to the fighters Cause, yeah because the, the fighters uh, had a pretty fighters similar and the interceptors mm -hmm. but yeah so definitely a uh, a more probably a more maneuverable ship i don't know if it's going to have those red turns or not but uh 90 forward 90 back that's not bad at all having a rear arc is usually pretty useful which one would assume, considering one of the weapons in the pack is fire this only out of your rear arc. Well, I think I think the real I think the real lesson here is I feel comfortable saying after seeing the Defiant, the Saber, and now the NX-01, WizKids is not going to put a uh, come about maneuver on something with a 180 degree firing arc. They're just not. Kazon ship. Oh, for God's sake! Okay, 
Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm an encyclopedia some days. Look, nobody. The Kazon ship is terrible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. They're getting more support later, and maybe Kazons are the faction of the future. I, but I, I really doubt it. Yeah. They, hey, they could become the next Vulcans. You know. That's true. That's true. You know, you know, all right, let me say this. They're not going to do it on a Federation ship. Happy? True. Very true. All right. So, uh, let's continuing with some of the things this Enterprise NX-01 can do. The Federation NX class. The, the Enterprise may equip the enhanced hull plating tech upgrade to the ship for free, even if it exceeds your ship's restrictions, which is good because <laughs> it doesn't have a tech slot. It has a weapon and three crew slots, so it's like a free text slot. I mean, it makes me wonder why they didn't just put enhanced hull plating text on the card, maybe. Um, I suppose then that you would have someone try, someone like me try to abuse that fact and put enhanced hull plating on it as well. Yeah, uh, my, my guess would be... Well, you could do that anyway if you can get another text slot on there, like with the Paul or something, but... My guess would be really um, oh you know what you know what I bet it is if if you have want to run enhanced hull plating you have to be vulnerable to stealing mm -hmm. you can't just get it you have to be willing to play uh, around okay. hijack and superior intellect and assimilation tubules Klingon boarding party which which we were talking about earlier since these NX ones don't have any shields they are vulnerable very vulnerable to the ganking possibilities mm -hmm. absolutely so that's a that's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a mitigation factor there especially considering how strong enhanced hull plating is but before we get on to that the ship in general it doesn't seem too bad I see, see I think I like it better than the Nova class uh, for 16 points, I get three agility and a weapon slot. Call me a happy guy. Oh, yeah, man. Throw some... I, I usually don't like some torpedoes, but throw some photon torpedoes in there. That's that's good value. Right. And, uh, I mean, as, as we're going to see, you know, this ship comes with a very cheap photons option. Indeed. You know? And, but even so, I mean, you could put... You know, Quantums and Spock on this ship and have, a, you know, effectively a 5 plus 1, 3, 3, 0 for 26 points. Nice. Six, yeah, six yeah. points for the torpedoes, four points for Spock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, we are, and, and... We are, we are um, totally not mixing our eras at all here. No siree. Well... Um, no, yeah, no, that, we can't, we can't really defend that, but, <laughs> um, honestly, though, uh, there are a lot of folks who play, you know, TOS, uh, or T, or, you know, movies back and everything else forward. Mm -hmm. So for a movies back event, you know, just throw on the five point photons instead. That's still very viable. Oh yeah, this is, uh, that would be. That'd be pretty cool. I haven't gotten a chance to do an era pure event yet, but I think that would be pretty fun. Um, I feel like I feel like Federation is. I feel like you're gonna have two things. You're gonna have Federation being very good. You're gonna have a lot of D seven swarms, and then you're gonna have so many cloaked mines. <laughs> so many, yeah. So many cloaked mines. I was gonna say that's about the only thing the Romulans really have, though. <laughs> yeah, is but there. it's a thing. It is a. It is it's, quite a thing. It. And in a meta with no Borg and weak, uh, very small, fragile ships, oh boy. <laughs> I think in Arab Pure, also the Vulcans get really powerful. Because, um... The Vulcans I mean, and the Excelsior it, are pretty darn yeah. strong. What's the oldest yeah. Klingon ship we have? Could we, could, I, uh, I wonder if we could Raptor. count the Kavort in that. The Raptor and the D7, I think, I think they can run the Katinga and that's it. Oh yeah, Katinga would do it. That would be their cloaker. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, for for its age, it's a it's a pretty handy ship. Especially uh -huh. when combined with the following card, enhanced hull plating. Ready to move on to that? Oh yes. Alright, now this thing is a wall of text and a half. So I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna bull right through it. All right. 
During the roll defense dice step of the combat phase, if your ship is not cloaked and you have no active shields, you may add up to two evade results to your defense roll. If you do so, place one auxiliary power token beside your ship for each evade result you add with this upgrade. This upgrade may only be purchased for a Federation ship. You cannot deploy more than one enhanced hull plating tech upgrade to any ship. All right. Why, hello there, Janeway Enterprise. <laughs> I mean, you need to get a tech slot on that thing, but man, you can, I think you could put a record for how many uh, power tokens you could stack up beside that thing. Well, gee, if only there was a three-point crew member that added a tech slot with a powerful secondary ability that synergized with Janeway's use of multiple tokens. Shh, no one knows her yet. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I'm a huge fan of this. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't I mean? It is weak to cling on boarding party, though. Indeed, getting this thing disabled. I mean, the fact that this is such a great value for four points. You know, two free evades is essentially like adding four evade dice to your to your ship. Even better because they're guaranteed. So, like, cloak has has nothing on this. So disabling I, I it is going to be a big deal. I, I think mathematically it's actually the same as adding six dice. Yeah, something like that. Because that'd be yeah, one, it's two, ridiculous. Is what it is. It's crazy. I think this yeah. this card alone almost makes you want to get three of these darn things. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm sold on this alone. Um, Maybe even four. I, could, uh, I don't know if I'd go that well, you know. I think it'd make a good... I, I, I'm starting to think it would make a great swarm ship. Yeah, it would. <laughs> it, it really, really would. Um, the only problem you'd have is that the basic NX-01 doesn't... It can't equip it. Because it doesn't have the tech slot. Oh, we can fix that. Yeah, we have to, We have Torres, and we'll have T'Pol, and we'll have a flagship, I guess. Or a fleet captain. We have, there's there's that old captain that nobody uses that came with the Excelsior. Style. Oh my god, yes, Styles, perfect. <laughs> I was going to say, with, with some of the recent releases, there's definitely been a, a tendency toward adding slots to ships, so I feel like having limited slots is not going to be much of a uh, restriction for very long. Yeah, and I think that's actually probably good for the game. There are a lot of ships that just don't get played because they don't have the right slots. Mm -hmm. Which is a shame, in my, my opinion. Uh, Galgathon, huge offender. Um, yeah, the Galgathon. But, uh, the lack of a tech slot there. If I if I start talking over you and repeating yeah, what you're but, saying, uh, is because you're cutting out. Okay. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's that's expected. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Um, Something about slots. Right. Something, uh, well, actually, what I was going to say was um, enhanced hull plating combos with a blade of armor. Enhanced hull plating plus a blade of armor. Yeah. Yeah, because that'll, because again, you will be, uh, yeah, this would make a great addition to Voyager because you're getting, on top of already having good defense dice, you know, the, the big problem with a blade of hull armor is, of course, you have to lower your shields. And lowering your mm -hmm. shields for just the five hull, you know, was strictly not as good as like the Borg blade of armor that was similar at the at the same release right. date. With, with this now you get a double bonus, so it's kind of you have your synergies now. Now you can drop your shields when you want to, plus you get a bonus while your shields are dropped. Right, and Voyager generation ships at dealing with auxiliary power tokens. Voyager is something about dealing with auxiliary power tokens. Better at it, probably because of the uh, the excessive green maneuvers. Is I'm assuming what was going on there. But yeah, it also has the uh, also take it with uh, check off as always to uh, do that. Oops. All right, lost Tucker for a moment. I will try to get him back. Hopefully, this does not come through as a totally horribly loud thing. Oh, good. All right, so while we're working on that, I will just go ahead and move on to... Oh. Hey, I'm back. Sorry, All right. sorry about that. <laughs> That's cool.
But yeah, enhanced right. hull plating, Voyager, something with power tokens. What were you going to say? Oh, uh, it's just we're, because of uh, the way we run Voyager now, Fed players are so used to getting auxiliary power tokens off Voyager anyway, you know, that this is just something that's not even much of a downside. Mm -hmm. And by the way, something else to note about this card, you don't have to take the extra evades. Sorry, you don't have to what? Take the extra evades. Oh, that is true. But then again, why would you not want to? I if you don't need that, them. In other words, exactly. if you're already rolling two defense dice to say, uh, you get two hits, you roll two evades, well, you don't need to take any ox tokens at all. Mm, there is one thing about that, and it says that the enhanced hull plating is used during the roll defense dice step. That's not during the modify defense dice step. Ah, okay. That's so you have to so so even if you have rerolls or battle sta well battle stations is easy to tell but if you have a reroll of some sort it'll be a little harder to mm -hmm. guess. I guess that's the the one minor drawback of it. But heck, I'll take that drawback. Well, over, it's, it's over during these. the now. Hold on a sec. It's during the roll defense dice step, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna see if there's a little bit of echo. So here. like. All right. So, like, sorry, there's probably going to be a little bit of echo from Tucker now because uh -huh. my headphones just died on me. Oh, okay. Um, but like, so you can roll your dice and, and then decide whether to use it or not, right? But you can't modify your dice. Yes, something like that. It's a little weird. Hmm. Being assimilated from Tucker, but... Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's pretty much... Uh, I think that'll be pretty much good for uh, enhanced hull plating there. And as we continue to keep trying to get Tucker back, I'm just going to go ahead and start on uh, Jonathan Archer. And by the way, guys, uh, I see... Uh, hello to everyone in chat. Uh, if you have any questions or want to want to add anything to the conversation, go ahead and go ahead and leave it, and we will uh, get to it. I feel that this is the this is a good opportunity to do that. <laughs> As you get to listen to my wonderful, lovely Skype sounds. All right, so hmm, I wish there was a way I could mute that. All right, so Porthos. Sorry. Anyway, I was like I was saying, getting on to Jonathan Archer. I'll try back with uh, Tucker in another minute. Jonathan Archer, the captain. We have add one crew upgrade slot to your upgrade bar. As an also as an action, you can disable up to two of your crew upgrades. For each crew upgrade you disabled with this action, gain plus one attack die when attacking with your primary weapon. And increase your skill number by plus one until the end phase. All right, so Tucker says he'll be back in a little bit, and we will keep going. Jonathan Archer, so five skill, one talent for three point. That is a that's actually a pretty good pretty good point value. Uh, it's standard for five point captains, and it's actually a little low to get a uh, to get a captain talent because a lot of captain talents start at six and up. There's a couple with five, and there were a few with four, but they were still all cost three points. So this is pretty good. This is pretty standard. I feel that there will be some uh, some fanboys of Archer raging that he only got a five skill, but we can change that thanks to his ability. It was it was all about the teamwork with him and his crew, right? I keep saying this, but I actually never watched Enterprise. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, number one, adding a crew slot is nice. And there are captains that had just this ability, but the the additional ability now that we can now that we can see you know things like things like lore and other crew that also do these kinds of things is that you're also getting the second ability, which this one is to disable disabling your crew upgrades for attack dice and for extra skill, both of which are really good. 
Uh, seven skill is nothing to sneeze at. Four attack dice for on a on a two attack ship, which can or which may or may not stack with uh, photon torpedoes if you're using them. Could be you know really big. Like if you you're throwing out seven die photon torpedoes, that can get pretty that can be, get pretty cool. Uh, the only problem is that without the bonuses, he is kind of lackluster. So you're definitely going to want a way to re-enable all of those crew quickly. You know, something like the uh, the doctor, or as we're going to see later in here, there is a crew upgrade that helps re-enable other upgrades. So, you know, as far as the captain goes, Archer, you know, not too bad. It's always the, the slots are always useful, and his action will be will be helpful. But top tier, I don't think so. Pretty good though. It was about teamwork with Archer, which is why the extra crew slot works. Sounds good to me. Ooh, seven dice quantum torpedoes. That's always a fun thought. All right, here is going to be one of my fa another one of my favorite cards of the pack. There are some great cards in this pack. Let me just tell you, Captain Maxwell Forrest, also known as Admiral Maxwell Forrest. We have action, action or fleet action. Perform an additional one maneuver, straight bank or turn. Now this guy is one of the ones you will definitely want to use as uh, an admiral. He is three points in both his captain and admiral forms, which is right now the cheapest admiral you can get. It's a plus one pointer. He does not give you an extra talent slot, unfortunately, but his action is spectacular. You know, performing an additional maneuver. Now, assuming that since it doesn't have a color on the maneuver. Whereas I'm assuming that you can only do something that's on your bar. So for most ships, this is just going to be a one straight or a one bank. But being able to maneuver yourself for an action is, always has had a great, great effect on the game. You know, sensor echo, the way you can get out of uh, other people's firing arcs. You know, this pre-board, you know, not counting them. But uh, being able to do an additional maneuver, the straight or bank, especially if you have maybe maybe if you're supporting a 180 degree arc ship, this could do this could do pretty pretty wonderful things. Um, you could combine it with we've got Janus Rand and uh, what you call it Corbomite maneuver that no one ever uses, but I always uh, find way find ways to put it in there. Not Corbomite, I'm sorry, the uh, Cochrane deceleration maneuver. You can use the fleet action to perform a one straight maneuver, and then you can use Janus Rand to discard your Cochrane Deceleration and instantly turn about no matter what kind of maneuver you actually did this turn. And I'm sure there's other benefits to it as well. Uh, it would work well with the Valdor if he needed it to go somewhere fast because then it could still get his bonus attack die because... I was going to say, the previous rulings on cards like this were if you can do a maneuver that's on your maneuver dial, it is the same color as the maneuver. This was what kind of what happened with, uh, like with Jadzia Dax. Uh, whatever maneuver she gave you was the same color as it was on your dial. But, yeah, I mean, super cheap Admiral. Still gives you the, the bonus captain skill, which is, mm, excuse me, it's going to be very nice. And the fleet action is pretty spectacular all things considered you know I'm not sure if I would rather have this or uh, Kirk Admiral action but I would say this is definitely you know definitely better than the uh, than the uh, Ducat fleet action and I don't remember what the Vulcan fleet action was at the moment but I think it's better than that too <laughs> so yeah definitely you probably almost definitely want to use this guy as a as an admiral instead of a instead of the uh, instead of the captain oh one other thing he works great with tholian ships too tholian ships which have to do a one forward to deploy their web it'd be really hard to get double actions with those but hey you can, someone could make it work all right moving on we have one more captain left in the pack and that is jay hayes he is a three skill for two points Action. Gain plus one attack die this round. At the end of the combat phase, suffer one normal damage to your hull. I think the general consensus about plus one attack die for an action is that it's not very good. Like, we've got all four disruptor banks for that, or uh, 
I mean, even Tuvok or something, and he's not even in action. So, I mean, for the most part, I don't think his ability is going to be all that useful. He doesn't have a talent slot. He doesn't have a very high skill. Like, he's, I mean, he's, he's your average Joe for the, uh, the level 3 captain slot. Like, I'd really rather have New Dock or somebody. Let's see, Vulcan Admiral. Target a ship at range 1 to 2. Disable a crew on it. Okay, so that's not too bad. I'd say that's about on par with uh, Maxwell Forest. But, yeah, for Jay Hayes, um, avoid this guy. Unless, you know, you... Unless you've gone through every other captain you have and you don't have anyone left. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't really need him. All right, moving on. We've got... We have three crew slots to fill, but we have six crew to do it with. Look at all these these wonderful, beautiful crew. We've got T'Pol, Malcolm Reed, Hoshi Sato, Charles Tucker III, Travis Mayweather, and good old Flox. I think someone was was hoping we would be we would have a Flox on here. Oh no, someone was looking for Porthos. Maybe we'll have Porthos. But yeah. Uh, starting with T'Pol, and as we were going back and talking about the uh, the enhanced the enhanced plating, the enhanced hull plating, add a tech slot to your upgrade bar with T'Pol. So, if you get two NX01s, one NX01 can have one enhanced hull plating, and the generic can have T'Pol and get the other. So, on top of that, she even has more stuff she can do, all for a measly three points. When attacking with your primary weapon, if there is a scan token beside your ship, you may disable this card to force the defending ship to roll minus two defense dice against the attack instead of minus one. You do not pay a faction penalty when deploying this card to a Vulcan ship. So T'Pol has the same thing that a lot of the Vulcans have had going, and that's the, the scanning. The, the scanning action is usually pretty good for them. And, you know, considering it, it's, it's not very strong in itself, it's a nice bonus. But it does take a disable, so you only get it like once a turn, once every couple turns, instead of you know, once all the, instead of all the time. And most of the, most games, I think you'll just you'll see her only be using once and then disabled because really the big thing she brings to the table is also the tech slot. So this is just this is gravy, and man, we like gravy. I mean, compare her to Belana Torres, who is five points for two slots. This is three points for one slot and a bonus ability. So. I would say that she will definitely have uses in the in the near future, so keep an eye out for her. She's gonna be she's gonna be on a lot of ships, especially since tech slots are one of the most coveted upgrade slots available. Moving on, we have Malcolm Reed. When attacking with your primary weapon, you may disable this card and discard one of your secondary weapon upgrades to add plus two attack dice to your attack. Not bad. He basically allows you to do a full volley with your photon torpedoes as a little bit of a bonus. So for all of you people that have been wanting torpedoes that can shoot at things that are in cloak, I think this is about the closest you're going to get for now. So he allows you to, you just have, it, it should be noted that, oh, number one, you disable him and discard one of your secondary weapon upgrades. I thought it was a disable secondary upgrade. So not quite the best there, but Let's say you have some of the really cheap weapons, maybe like the uh, the Vulcan aft particle beam or the uh, the rear firing phase cannon that we're going to be getting into in a little bit. He, he they'll definitely have his uses. You can those those two that's two attack dice for no action and no action can definitely be useful. It makes a great alpha strike. It works great against cloakers because in the first round you're probably going to have your cloak going on and off, going on and whatnot. And just throwing more dice at cloak is really the best way to deal with it. This allows you to battle stations it up and use use Malcolm Reed. Get I mean it's only four attack dice on the NX01, but on any other ship like the Enterprise D or something, six or seven attack dice is going to be it's going to be pretty hard to deal with. Uh, since we are talking about the secondary weapons now, I'm going to just go ahead and skip ahead to the aft phase cannon. Uh, this is essentially the Vulcan aft particle beam. It's a 1 to 3 range, 3 attack. It is a weapon, but it is a 2 point Federation upgrade instead of a 1 point Vulcan upgrade. The sad thing, unfortunately, it does the exact same thing as the Vulcan aft particle beam, but it does come with this ship, so you don't have to buy another ship just to get it. 
Attack, disable this card to perform the attack. The weapon can only be fired from your rear firing arc. So let's say your rear firing arc's not doing you much good. You can discard this with, uh, with, man, I forget names so quick. You can discard this with Malcolm, get your two attack dice up real quick, and good, good value for two, eh, five points for plus two attack dice on your alpha strike. Not bad. It could work. It would. It'll work well against you know non-board fleets that aren't designed to take alpha strikes. But uh, it's definitely it's definitely something you can consider. Even more so if you have like really cheap weapon upgrades thanks to Sakona, which is minus two points or or something like that. Right. I hear Tucker. That's right. Okay. Here's I your should turn. be past all the dead spots now, so let's see. Cool. All right. So while you're gone, we went over Maxwell, Hayes, DePaul, Malcolm, and the Phase Cannon. Anything you'd okay. like to add? Okay. Max Maxwell, Hayes, DePaul, Malcolm, and the Phase Cannon, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I have nothing to say about those except Hayes is indescribably bad. Um... <laughs> And I, I do agree. like what the phase cannon says in terms of, I think it's them. I think that uh, with the Kier and the aft particle beam, they said, here is a thing we want, you know, the feds to have. And then faction pure became a thing. And they're like, well, let's make it, you know, for fed pure players. It's, it's a reskinning of the weapon. It's a reskinning of the weapon with the uh, faction penalty point included. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So not terrible. I was talk I was just going over it. That was the last thing I brought up is like, well, if you can run it with Sakona, then you have some more fodder for Malcolm Reed. You know, uh -huh. you, you can you can there's things you can do with it, but Yeah. I, I if you don't feel too strongly about having initiative, it's a good way to finish out a build. Indeed. Alright, so after that I think we're gonna go on to Hoshi Sato. Okay. Okay. I'll take your silence as a yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Hoshi, when defending, if there is a scan token beside your ship, during the roll attack dice step of the combat phase, you may disable this card to force the attacking ship to roll one less die. She costs three points as a Federation upgrade. And I like her. Uh, the ability to force somebody to roll less attack dice is actually pretty rare in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though it's only one, again, I see her as being one of the uh, one of the one of the kind of quick one shots. This a lot of these crews seem to have you know your initial engagement, you are boosted for that, and then after that happens, then you either you know get out of there and re-enable all your upgrades, or you're just you're just slugging it out with your slightly reduced effectiveness. Well, we have a way, of course, to enable all our upgrades in this pack, but um, the thing, what, what Hasho's, what, sorry, what Hoshi Sato is to me is, um, it's, it's a way to stop your opponent from getting fleet points that could win them the game. Does that make sense? Say it one more time. It's a way to stop your opponent from getting the fleet points they need to win the game. In other words, they need to kill you on one roll, and they have just enough dice to do it. Well, now they don't. Hmm. Yeah, it it helps it helps bring down the uh, the one hit kill potential. Yeah, and it it also helps. You know, if 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 you don't if if your game is going to be remember OP three, the winner is purely whoever has the most fleet points at the end. You know. So this is something that can help you save a ship, maybe win a game. That could be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm not sure it's worth three points in the slot. Um, it is not one of the cards that outright impresses me in the pack, but it may be. It may merit further testing. Yeah, that is a problem. Like this is about on par, a little bit, maybe a little bit better than like red shirt. Which yeah, it's better than Redshirt. Was not, yeah, Redshirt was not, well, Redshirt was okay, but for the point value, he was definitely replaced by better things. 
Yeah, and I mean, this is one of those better things. It does disable, not discard, which is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have something that, it re again, that re-enables a lot of crew at once, this thing is going to help mm -hmm. you a lot. Gee, where would you get one of those? I don't know. Maybe there will be one at the end of all of this. Huh. Huh. <laughs> all right. Next up we have here, Charles Tucker III. Is that how it was addressed? I don't know. I am really upset. I, I am really upset that this guy is good. Action for he a three point Federation crew with an action. If your ship is not in the forward arc of any enemy ships, repair one damage to your ship's hull. Hmm. Kind of gives the uh, kind of gives the regenerate action to uh, to Federation a little bit. If your if your ship is not in the forward firing arc of any enemy ships, <sighs> that's one of those things yeah. that's going to need to be clarified with the Borg three hundred and sixty, isn't it? That's going to be annoying. With the one captain, one with the the one captain, the Vulcan uh, captain, Uvok, right? Yeah, the uh, the Vulcan captain. The same problem. But you know, assume Are you there, getting, getting away from the uh, the Borg aspect. Um, if your ship is not in the forward firing arc of an enemy ship, so he would be good on a high maneuverability ship. You know, one that can get behind you and stay behind you. Pretty good against things like the uh, the Kelding classes and such. But uh. I don't know. Repairing damage to your ship's hull is generally not as good as repairing damage to your shields. Because taking damage... To, it, it can get rid of crits, but if you're taking damage to the hull, there's a good chance that you are dying. Uh, sad part is, he works exceptionally well on Borg ships. They love getting behind you, and they love just uh, staying behind you. Hey Hi, there. Man. Yep. All right. Cool. All right. Um, so I'm sorry. What were you saying? I was saying Charles Tucker works stupidly well on Borg ships, unfortunately. Um, it does work well on Borg ships. They like that, getting behind you. Anything that was good, anything that has good maneuverability, he likes. Yeah. Um, but uh, I will say this: um, hull repair also appears to be getting a little bit more common. This is the second wave in a row that's had a hull repair card, um, which was which was originally extremely rare. Mhm. Mm it is better than the ones that you know keep discarding and disabling themselves. Yeah, um, but this is, I mean, you know, we had two blind boosters that contain hull repair, and then uh, refit Scotty, and then you know that's that's a lot. Um, also, I would just can I can I make a personal request to the audience about this card? Okay, um, folks, go ahead. Please call him Trip. Trip. For all the people out there named Tucker who automatically assume that you're calling them whenever they hear the name Tucker because they never hear the name Tucker. Please call them. Please call him Trip. <laughs> From one Tucker to the world. It, that actually happened to me last night. Like, the thing is, if your name, you know, if you have a common name and you don't hear it, and somebody shouts, hey, you know, Bob, you know, you don't automatically assume it's you. But when you hear the name Tucker really loudly, it's just, trust me, man, trust me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but I like him. I like him. And if he's good against Borg, if, if the ruling goes his way against Borg, he's going to be a strong contender on a lot of Fed builds. Yeah, I was saying. Well, like I was saying while you were uh, while you were gone for a second there, I like him, but I still like repairing hull is nice and getting rid of crits every once in a while. But if you're taking damage to hull, you're a lot closer to dead than if you're repairing damage to shields. Um, maybe yes, maybe no. Are you running the NX01? Do you have shields to begin with? Are you running an ablative generator? You know, did something sneak by you there? Mm-hmm. Mm. There. Some There's fair just, points, but generally you'll be losing shields before hull. And if you lost all your shields and you want to, and you're in a position to re regenerate, then, mm -hmm. uh, then yeah, you really need a, some ability to. You really want to be able to regenerate shields instead of just hull. I don't know. I guess yeah. it's, a, it's a bit of a toss up, but you do get rid of the crit though, and that's nice. 
Oh yeah, and it doesn't cost you your attack, which is why the board yeah. love him. Maybe if you could, maybe you could fit him on eight four seven two as well. You never know. Uh yeah, yeah I can see that. Things with big hull. Things with uh, quantum singularity or transport conduit. Oh, that'd be pretty. Yeah, that'd be pretty nice. You can get him. Yeah, that's an easy way to get behind people. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. I thought a board ship does not have a forward firing arc. 360 doesn't count as a forward. Am I remembering it wrong? No, you're not. But the rulings go that anything that requires a forward or rear firing arc do not affect the Borg at all. So things like Valdor, who have to be outside your... If they are outside your forward firing arc, then he gets plus one attack die. Since the Borg don't have one of those, technically, you cannot be in or out of it. So... Then you get into the weird, uh, we get into the weird, what am I looking for? The weird word play, the, uh, uh -huh. the grammatical sentence structure does, can you be, if you don't have an arc, you can't be in it, you can't be out of it, but can you not be in it? Now, yeah, now, now we're getting it, into fancy logic puzzles. Yeah, and, and, and really, I think what this is, the wording on this and the previous, and, and the uh, Vulcan captain in this wave have changed i think this may be a conscious decision on the part of the designers to find something that will work against the borg you know that could be a thing because be yeah thing. if it rules in favor of in, in favor of trip here then yeah. he can he can always repair no matter where you are in relation to the borg and see that's the thing the flip side though is if he doesn't work i just don't see running him for all the reasons you said for, this, for the same reason that you're not, uh, the, the Borg are too prevalent and he's just not going to make an impact in enough games. Yeah, if he's a dead card against the Borg, then... Because mm -hmm. remember, we've already said that uh, thanks to the, um, what do you call it, the um, the soon, we know that firing arcs go forever, right? Yep. So if, if, it doesn't say, if it doesn't include a range, then forward firing arc includes all the way across the board. Right. So, technically, that would mean that if your opponent was had even one Borg ship on the field, if the ruling goes the other way, Trip never works at all. It's just a dead mm -hmm. card. Who knows? Hopefully, yeah. we'll get some answers from that. And yeah, of course, as, and of course, as soon as we do get an answer, that you will hear it right here on State of the Federation. Absolutely. As long as it mm -hmm. happens on a Tuesday. Exactly. I was going to say, remind, remind me to talk about Volley of Torpedoes before we close out. Will do. <laughs> but continuing with the NX-01, we're moving on to Travis Mayweather. During the activation okay. phase, as a two-point crew, if you reveal a two or three bank maneuver, you may disable this card to change it to a turn maneuver. So lazy into a sharp. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. If you do so, treat it as a red maneuver. The number and direction of the new maneuver remember the, may remain the same. So this is a uh, a neat kind of different kind of uh, alteration of your uh, alter movement alteration ability. Uh huh. Well, I'll say. So it's it's different. It's still different than the admiral who just gives you a one maneuver. It's different than than sensor echo. It's different than uh, it's different than Uhura. It's actually pretty close different to Uhura. Than, different than engage. Mm-hmm. Which is what I want to really compare it to. Yeah, that could work pretty well. And you can use it. You can use it with a little farther. So, so the uh, the attempt, the times you can use it are about the same, but it keeps you in a tighter arc than a longer arc to uh, mm -hmm. to turn. So, like as, as opposed to a two bank taking you all the way out here, a a two bank into a two turn would just still be right in there. Yeah. Um. What do you I, think of him? I'm curious to hear what you think of him. I mean, I guess he's all right. Like, if you're having a problem, I think I hear something ticking. Turn signal. Gotcha. So, I don't know. Like, I guess if you're having problems with... Uh, if, if you need to make a guess on how far an enemy is going to go, and you might be just a little bit off, like, they go farther than you expect them to, I mean, I guess he could be a good... Uh, he, he help you, you know, turn... Help you just fishtail out a little bit so you can get your get your arc in the right place. But I mean, in general, I don't really think I, even though he's only two points, I don't really think I'm going to find a use for him. 
I agree with that. I'd rather have Engage. Um, I, I, you know, I want to like him, but the fact that he makes it a red maneuver is just the deal breaker for me. Yeah, that's not really that good either. Especially if the the two or three turn was or the yeah, especially if the two or three turn was not a red maneuver to begin with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's like because the thing is with engage, you know, with free actions, Picard, stuff like that, you can get around the drawback. With this, the only way to deal with it is uh, refit Scotty or auxiliary control room, and you know, it's just I, too much of a cost. You know, I guess he could have some use with uh, like the what's it called with like the Keldon class or the Sung or the battleship, the cards that don't actually have a two turn maneuver. So since it is since it does give you a, a degree and a color, those those kinds of cards usually are allowed to give you a maneuver that you don't have on your dial. Yeah, it doesn't say you perform a red turn maneuver it says you count that maneuver as red so that's yeah iffy. but look, says I, I would hope that he would work for it mm -hmm. you know because that might actually make the gem at our battleship uh more desirable in this meta at least a little bit and i actually i'm very fond of that i'm fond of uh new cards re reviving old ships mm -hmm. so so it could be helpful but yeah, in general, he's very specialized, so he's not probably not going to see much use. Yeah, Perfect. which is a shame. All right. Uh, last but not least, we have Definitely Flox. Definitely not least. Mr. Flox. Two-point federation Flox. crew. <laughs> During the activation phase, you may disable this card to remove all disabled upgrade tokens from all your other, dis all your other crew upgrades. Holy... Moly. Interesting. Yeah. I suppose this technically works a little better than the Doctor. Technically? Nothing. This guy is amazing. <laughs> because the Doctor... Look, the thing about the Doctor is every combo I make with him, I end up having to spend... I can't do anything good with my turn because I have to spend my action reactivating activating the Doctor. Well, now I don't. Why? Because... Federation Fleet Captain, because Lee Nollis, arguably. Because well, that is the question: is if Lee Nollis work? If is if Lee Nollis works with this one? But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But yeah, so nice thing bonuses. For, okay, so Flox versus the Doctor. Number one, Flox takes one less point to start with. Yeah. He is. He also. Is if you compare to New McCoy, he's still he, he's also who's also two points. Yeah. Also better, but the Doctor can take a tech slot. Gives you more room for more crew to disable. Yeah, that's true. Flocks on the that. other Flocks on the other hand can disable during the activation phase, even if you bump or have a power token. Ooh, that's a good point. He's I did not, not know that either. And re-enabling him is an action, of course, which might be uh, which you might be hard pressed to do after after that point. But if you need that, if you need that just one uh, that one turn worth of bonuses, and that's what you're stacked on. So the combo with Lee Nollis. If you have Flocks and Lee Nollis, the question the question that arises is, can you disable Lee Nollis instead of disabling Flocks to use Flocks' ability? And if so, does Flox then immediately remove the disable token from Linalis, which would essentially mean that you get unlimited, uh, uh, unlimited removal of all disable tokens from crew for free every turn. Yeah, um, I my my inclination is to say yes, but that's. That is something that definitely you need to talk to your TO about, and we really would like to hear from Chris Guild about. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, I mean, honestly, it, it's good, um, especially considering, you know, we're starting to see a lot, you know, Fed has a lot of ships now with three or more crew slots, and, you know, we're starting to see more and more disabled to use outside of an action crew, you know? I mean, look at this ship alone. Oh yeah. I mean, if you combine, you can combine this with uh, 
I mean, combine this with like Archer and uh, fl the crew fleet captain, mm -hmm. or somebody mm -hmm. using Vulcan High Command. You know, you can get a lot of crew slots on a ship these days. Lore with Vulcan oh, yeah. High Command is the classic way. And there's some darn good there's some darn good cards that just require you to disable them. Like they're they're essentially half actions since you mm -hmm. because they are disabling type things. So. I mean, well, the first one that comes to mind, of course, is like all the ones that came with the uh, the Enterprise refit, which would be right. uh, Scotty, which can keep you from getting an Ox token. You've got mm -hmm. Chekhov, which lets, which is kind of like a soft target lock. Well, I mean, even just even just Scotty, Scotty, Lee Nollis, and the Doctor means you can perform red maneuvers every turn, and get your actions. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, and three crew slots. I mean. That's on Voyager. Well, Voyager doesn't have any red maneuvers. Okay. That's on the Annex 01. You know? That's, That's on... on the Enterprise D, man. That's on the Galaxy class. Yeah, it's just hard to picture those things turning. I know, right? Yeah, but now, you could, they, now you could they could turn. if they wanted to. Yeah, they could they could they could turn. <laughs> wow, that's that's a weird thought. They could they can back up forever. Oh yeah, there's that. Full reverse, going that way. Yeah, full reverse. That's a that's a thing now. With uh, with uh, as long as you have Phlox and Scotty and so so be. Sorry, were you trying to were you saying something else? Did I lose you again? Maybe. But yeah, so Phlox definitely has a lot of uses here, and continuing on, we round out the uh, rounding out. The oop, I lost it. Wait, come back, come back. That's the one. Okay, rounded out with the basic weapons. F phase cannon. We already went over photonic torpedoes. These are not photon torpedoes. They are photonic. I don't know if that's important. However, it is four attack dice, range two to three, for only two points. That's that's pretty nice. Pretty darn cheap. Uh, they don't have the battle stations to crit conversion of the 3.1s, which I think were all right. But uh, you can fire it out of your forward or rear firing arcs. It, it can be a nice little boost. Maybe you could cut throw it if you had already put Tuvok on your ship or something. He could uh, he could add on to that. But it definitely adds firepower to the to the NX01 here. Hey, you got me? I'm back with you. Good. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, that should that should be the uh, last of it. I forgot I had to go through a tunnel, but uh, yeah. We're gotcha. Good. So, any, do you have any last words on Phlox? Um, Phlox was one of my favorite characters in Enterprise, so I'm I'm I am biased towards liking him. But I really do think that you know all of the excitement that the Doctor caused when he came out. This is really the card we were waiting for. Oh yeah, this is this is really strong. I'm sure someone really will find. Strong. Especially if you combine it with emails, and even if you can't, I'm sure someone will find a way. Well, maybe, I mean, wait, maybe this guy, at the very least, or something. I don't know. But yeah. So yeah. Uh, moving on from that, we had photonic torpedoes, which are not photon torpedoes. Two points, not oh, bad. Oh yeah. That... But other than that, they're just pretty, pretty basic. I mean, you still have to use the target lock on them, which I don't like. So, eh. After that, we have everyone's yeah. favorite tactical. Alert. I'm actually really upset that you pointed out that they're not photon torpedoes. Uh oh. I was gonna say, what does that actually change? Yeah, you there? Thing? Yeah, I'm still there. What does that change? Does that mean you can't use secondary? Uh, you can't use it. You cannot. You can't use it with the saber. Oh, or I got the, you. the the Jaeger. The yeah, Jaeger. Yeah, so no that. 24 point torpedo boat. Sorry. Gotcha. Oh, that would have been nice and cheap, wouldn't it? Nope. Yeah, it would have, and probably too good. Maybe. It would have given it a boost by one attack. Eh. But after that, we have tactical alert. <laughs> Not red alert. Tactical Not red alert. alert. Tactical. It's unique, too. I wonder why. <laughs> no one else in the fleet uh, wants to use it. Unique. Talents question mark? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna say I think someone else is supposed to be deserving of that. That doesn't have a talent slot, but 
Yeah. When attacking or defending two point Federation talent, you may discard this card and spend a battle stations token to reroll any number of your attack or defense dice. Not too bad, I guess, for a two point talent. Way better if you didn't have to discard. Uh, um, it, it would be too good if you didn't have to discard. I mean, basically, what this set is, what this says is, you know, you can take a battle stations, but if you want, you can turn it into a target lock. Battle stations or target lock, which I know we don't really talk yeah. about that other game around here very much, but X-Wing does have a crewman, Han Solo, which does the exact same thing. Whenever you take a battle stations, you can use a target lock as you can use it as a target lock or a battle stations, and he does it forever. That seems really good. Doesn't it? I like it a lot. Sadly, yeah. tactical alert is not quite that good. Which makes me wish yeah. it were only like one point or something. But, mm -hmm. I guess if you have two points to spare, but who really has two points to spare these days? But, yeah, the other thing is, um, it can reroll defense dice roll, which is nice. I could, yeah, I could see it being useful on a cloaking ship that rolls zero defense dice all the time. Like all of my cloaking ships do. <laughs> Every last still, one. Still not over that, huh? Hey, it happens It happens more often than you would think. Oh, I'll tell you what. Um, last night, my girlfriend was playing in an OP2 with Klingons. She actually had two Warp Corp reaches happen to her on the same ship. <laughs> she, had, she had to explain to her opponent um, what happens when you use the action on the first one. It means you're not affected by the second one. Because it actually it does say on the card, if you use this action, you are no longer affected by any warp core breach cards. Right, and the easy way to remember that is if you eject your warp core, you can't have a warp core breach. What? That's ridiculous. What about our backup warp core? <laughs> we, we have one of those, right? Uh, somebody in the Star Trek universe probably does. I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably a Ferengi. Uh yes, I could see that. No, the Ferengi would have the Ferengi would have sold their backup warp core for latinum. No, no, they got a great deal on it. It's refurbished. <laughs> oh my god, I really want that to be a Ferengi upgrade. Refurbished warp core. <laughs> Yours for the low, low price of only one squadron point. God. Good old Latinum. Yeah. Good old Latinum. But yeah, Tactical Alert works for cloaked ships. Only saving grace. Which is pretty nice, but if you have a battle station on a cloaked ship in the first place, you're already probably doing yeah. pretty well. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, I mean, I guess you'd want to reroll if you rolled nothing but blanks, but, you know, that isn't going to happen all too often. Yeah. All right, so that I believe that's it for the NX01. Any uh, anything else you wanted to say before we shut this one down? Um, this is the only way where I've really seriously thought about getting uh, multiples of all the ships. Yeah, the only one you know that you I mean? thought of making multiples of. Well, no, this is the only wave I've wanted to get multiples of, you know? Oh, right. The Scout Cube and the uh, the other, the Vulcan Serac class. Yeah, I could see that. With the uh, Combat Vessel variant, yeah. Mm hmm That's cool. I mean, it's, it. yeah, this is, this is one of, you know, don't be, don't be, you know, led into a full sense of security by the fact that this is just a 16-point ship. I think this is one of the most powerful Federation releases in quite some time. It does have some good things, and I'm sure there are quite a few shenanigans you pull, especially if you're like me and I try to see if I can get three enhanced hull platings on one ship. Uh, good luck, because you can only put one per ship? Superior intellect? Assimilation? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, look, I get six evades against every single attack ever. Yeah. Don't mind me. I yeah. Uh, I guess it would have to be on the uh, Janeway price, huh? Yeah. Let's be honest. If you're getting six evades every turn, do you really need actions anyway? 
Um, well, no, probably. I mean, not. maybe if the Flox Lee Nalis combo works. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, I know boy. I'm a terrible person. So before I get even more terrible, I think we should close out on that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And let's see. We'll go looking into the Gen Con list in just a second. So, Volley of Torpedoes. I was going to say something about that. It was yes. ruled that Volley of Torpedoes only needs two targets to launch multiples of them. Whoa! Wait, when did that happen? Uh, that happened the last time Chris Guild hung around, and I think it was like last Wednesday or so. Really? I so he didn't. He, it was one of those ones that he didn't write down, but he thumbsed up one of the posts that were below it, which happened, uh, to be one, which happened to be one of mine, which is why I noticed it so quickly. I see. I so see. So if you if you have two targets in your forward firing arc, you can you can unload all of your volleys of torpedoes on them. Well. How many can you fit for That's three viable. points with Sakona and the uh, the weapon flagship captain? Uh, um, a lot. I'd and, have to go home and do the math, but a lot. And, and thought gore and some cold storage. Uh. But yeah, so that was one of the one of the more um. recent rulings that seemed pretty important. That could that could change things. I still don't see it being a huge strategy. Because all you have to do to not get hit by it is split up your ships. However, sometimes that said, it is sometimes hard to. Ooh, excuse me. It is sometimes hard to remain combat effective while your ships are on opposite sides of the board. Um, one eighty four firing arcs, though. I mean, you're gonna have to split your ships really far. Uh, it only works on the Gemhead R ships. They only have ninety degrees. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and those, well, that that battle cruiser is a maneuverable son of though. Yeah, the battle cruiser is pretty nice, and it does come with, and you can finish it off with the bonus one attack die torpedoes if you even wanted to. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> that's totally worth the points. Exactly. All right, I'm just gonna adjust the audio levels just a little bit. I don't think there was a big problem, but that might make it better. So, uh, let's see. Having gone, having gone over that, uh, let's see. The next thing I wanted to talk about was some Gen, Gen Con? Con. What did we all see at Gen Con? Well, I say we, but I wasn't actually there. I was looking. I, I'm. I was already planning ahead to save money for the regional events. Yeah. Tucker, you didn't make it out there either. I hear. Yeah, and from the news reports, I'm glad I didn't. Oh yeah, there there was there was a lot of uh, a lot of things about the uh, the distribution of promotional materials, but I mean, we're not going to really go into that here. We're we're here about the games. We love the games. Yeah, no, I mean WizKids, in my opinion, has has had a very satisfactory response to all that. So I'm I'm not gonna. I mean, am I still unhappy about some things? Sure, but it's not really the point of this uh, podcast. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so from what I did hear is that they did actually change up the rules for the event just a little bit. It did not. It did end up being on a... Ooh. You right over there, Tucker? We'll assume that's a yes. So, it did not end up being the 2 by 3 areas that we thought it was. Yeah, it looks like he dropped the phone. Yoink. We'll have you back in a minute. But it did end up being on the full 3x3 three three grid. Still no planets, though, so there were some advantages and disadvantages to that. But a lot of the things that were seen, it, it didn't seem like it was too competitive an event half the time. But the other half of the time, it was it was kind of dominated by Borg, and there's a there's a uh, a little list here in on Board Game Geek that I went up went off of. Um, basically, a lot of cubes, a lot of a lot of double spheres, and a lot of attack canceling were were kind of the flavor of the day, and I'm not really surprised at that. 
there were a couple extra ones. Uh, the Dreadnought Voyager seen, looks like it was pretty popular. Uh, apparently someone ran the Tholian ships, as I could have told them before that before that started. Uh, that's a bad idea. I love that my Tholian ships, don't get me wrong, but they are just too slow and too fragile. Makes me very sad. I really wanted to be able to just roll 10 attack dice all the time at other people while, while darting in and out of my webs, but didn't work so well. Uh, let's see, more attack canceling. Uh, double Negvar attack reducing. This one I would be interested to see, and I wonder if they were running like the EM Pulse or something. Uh, the name of this post on Board Game Geek is just looking for Gen Con session reports. Uh, and there's there's a couple others. There will probably be a couple other session reports coming up later since the uh, since Gen Con just kind of finished. But uh, yeah, the inter there was an Interceptor Five Dreadnought, which I actually have a full list for. Uh, that is going to be an Admiral Kirk Lore, the Cheat Death Vulcan High Command, Amadagon, Volana Torres, Bohica, Shelby, Paris. Advanced cloaking, a cloaking device itself, because it can get this from the flagship that it's using. Donk. And dorsal weapons array and energy dissipator. So not only did it have ways to negate single attacks by hitting with the dissipator, it also had ways to hit things that were outside of its arc. 98 point interceptor 5 dreadnought build. Yeah, Sorry, I'm back. What do, you, what do you think Inter of the 98-point Interceptor Dreadnought? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, it, it's just just anything it can do, something else can do better. Like, it's not... It's a fun build. It's a fun build. It's cute. Pro Rob Suck, the guy who made it, like, all right, I see what you did there. I like it, but... <sighs> And it did well. That's 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 the other thing. It's apparently it did pretty well. Oh yeah, I I also like that one of the opponents he faced was apparently running the Will Sanchez special. Two spheres with sideboard Picard and Dissipator. That was the one I was running in Tholian Web. I oh. it is it is my fleet now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's a oh boy. But yeah. Cool things all around. Uh, let's see. Uh, it looked like from this report, it looks like the most the most consistent uh, top table list was the the Picard Tactical Cube with the double ablative and once more. It seems to. It also included a sideboard for Wayne and Beryl just in case, and I mm -hmm. can approve of that. Yeah, once more was actually clever. That was a card that that has been sort of historically passed over, but that uh, that certainly does uh, that certainly does uh, add firepower. Yeah, it, well, what it does is it allows you to uh, counter Wayun Veril um, because you make two attacks. Oh yeah, and hopefully you can get with, with that. You can at least uh, even if you, if you don't kill them in one shot, you can at least do something to uh, hurt them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 it, it really is a way of just um, dealing with a lot of it, it, it's it's a weird card that only works in the mirror. Well, I mean, it's good not in the mirror match, but. It works better in the mirror match. Also, the, the main disadvantage of it is sort of mitigated if you don't have any de defense dice to begin with. Oh, yeah. It's like you don't get to roll any defense dice. Oh, well, I didn't have any to begin with. But, yeah, uh, another report that it was a huge board convention. Uh, the 3 p.m. tournament had 18 players. 14 of them had Borg. Uh, the mm -hmm. 5 o'clock one had 12 players, 8 of which were Borg. Well, apparently the Borg were going like every other event, but uh... but even even every other event there were still a lot of them, and while a lot of well it looks like a lot of there were there were there were enough people here just to have fun there were there were also a lot of people here just to win. 
Yeah, just, which is somewhat disappointing since apparently the I heard the price support was a little disappointing for this. Price support originally was disappointing for this. And then apparently someone had the brilliant idea of breaking open some of those DS9 packs and handing those out as prizes. No. Oh. All right, yeah, I can see that. So every every like the top 4 each got two of the cars from the DS9 pick of their choice in oh. you know in descending oh, order. Two of the car, like you, that's what you're gonna get for showing up to the regionals. Is that what it's gonna be? I didn't know if it was just two cars. Like you're gonna, you get one for just participating. I know. I, I didn't. Yeah, I then, haven't looked much into the door prize versions yet. Well, no, it's it's you get one for participating, and then if you win at least a game, you get another one. And if you're one of the bottom eight people who didn't win a game, you get a uh, one. So it's like you're you're pretty much almost guaranteed to get two. Mm -hmm. And and from what I understand, they they might also be getting giving some out as prizes in the uh, in the side events because a lot of the, a mm -hmm. lot of the Gen Con in your store events are like a week, two or three days long, and the big the big regional events usually aren't until the, that Sunday. So before that, they have side events for prizes, and I'm pretty sure it said somewhere that the DS9 pack was going to be like winter material. No, uh, that makes sense. And by the way, also keep in mind. Did you you saw the WizKids uh, vice president's uh, announcement about the packs, right? Did I? Which one? I saw something on Board Game Geek. Refresh my memory, so I don't have to go the, looking for it. The board on on Board Game Geek uh, in a a, a uh, I can't find the thread right now, but the vice president of WizKids came on Board Game Geek and said, "Look." We severely underestimated demand, so we're looking into ways to make the DS9 and Cloak Ship packs available commercially. Oh, that'd be nice. I would like yeah. some of those cloaked, the Cloak Ship packs because I do love running my three Cloaked Keldons in, in in my less competitive games. Yeah, well, it's not like yeah, I was like what I, I was I was honestly thinking to myself the only thing. If it weren't for the DS9 cards, the only thing Will Sanchez would need less than a cloaked ship pack is a torpedo boat pack. <laughs> hey, hey. A before Borg, I pioneered... Uh, I was I was helping pioneer the five Romulan science vessel swarm. Okay, fine, but... All with cloaked mines? Man, that was, those were the days. Yeah. I hear that. Oh boy. But yeah, uh, that is the Gen Con report, or at least the information we have so far. So if you are planning gearing up for uh, for regionals and stuff, I would definitely expect to see, uh, uh, again, a similar distribution of, well, a lot of Borg for people who want to win, uh, attack canceling. So, I mean, the... Uh, the two sphere list with just like Picard and Ducat is pretty straightforward, but I mean like all three of the, there's like three major bills. There's the two the two sphere with Ducat and Picard, the gigantic Picardo cube, mm -hmm. and then the Weyun and Veril cube, and each one of those kind of loot beats one of the others. Surprisingly yeah. enough, not a lot of uh, assimilation tubules. I don't I don't see here, but. I feel like that will be that will change in the near future, especially if I'm around. I am I am slowly forcing my my meta to have to deal with uh, like Wayu and Veril shenanigans, making them want to bring along some uh, some crew stealing. And with the Scout Cube coming out, and with the Sung and all their good stuff, I feel like it's going to happen a lot more easily soon enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're gonna. I think even so much as you, you, there's going to be a lot more disruption in the meta. And one of the best ways to deal with the disruption is to have better disruption than the other guy. So we're probably going to see tubules. And at, even if we don't see them as an offensive strategy, you know, I gank your good upgrades, we might even just see them as a way to stop you from ganking, you know, to stop you from disabling Borg or blade of hull armor or something. Mm -hmm. And and I hate to say this, but I am I am strongly considering now picking up the uh, the Kronos one for Chang. 
because with so many actions out there, you know, even if you are hitting a Picard or a Ducat with that, that will instantly re-enable themselves. Uh, re-enabling a captain is an action that is taken away from using one of your crew upgrades or one of your tech upgrades, like assimilation tubules or something that steals things from other people. But he's so bad. He is like the only locked. the only way you get use out of him is if you put him on the Dominion Independent flagship. Which isn't even or, good or possibly flagship. stack him with Martok. But I feel I, I feel like that level of disruption it might be something that we need to start looking into. God, I hope not. I know, right? Yeah. 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 The, the first time he disables Wei Yun and stops you from canceling an attack, you'll thank him. It'll be a, it, it's a pain on points though, man. Yeah, and I, it'll, I'll, I'll let me tell you, I'll be gritting my teeth the whole time. It hurts. It hurts my soul just a little bit. Hurts my soul a lot of bit. <laughs> All right, so that was what news we had from Gen Con. Uh, anything else you wanted to add before we move on? Mm, no. I'm, I mean, this is basically what we expected to see. The one thing I'm surprised at is no Klingons. But uh, I'm sure there were some Klingons somewhere. There, there, someone had like a list of like two or three Klingons. But really, what stood out most, of course, was the board because everyone love them or hate them, everyone knows the Borg. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves the Borg. <laughs> I feel like you're being facetious there, sir. I like the Borg. I win a lot. I like winning. In fact, yeah. that's what this entire show is about, is winning, darn it. That's correct. <laughs> All right, so uh, 10 more minutes left. I think I'll just go over, I just wanted to go over, you know, I had two OP2 events in the last week, finally. The, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, damage race on the cube. And for the chat, if any of you guys have any questions or anything you want us to, uh, to address before we, before we head out, uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and leave those in the chat now. But uh, so I was talking about this, you know, the two weeks ago. I was tr thinking of running the, uh, the, the kind of Borg disruption build against, uh, for, for my OP2 events. And I did end up doing that. Uh, my list was a sphere with, uh, I think I ended up putting Gen Con on it, and also the Borg Tractor Beam. He had a couple other crew as well. He had Superior Intellect, Krosis, Janus Rand, and Goval. So I could Krosis twice. I could Superior Intellect something for free, for a free action with, uh, with Janus Rand. And I had three crew on there because I was using the uh, the crew upgrade fleet captain. So my superior intellect was free point wise and I could get I fit my three crew on there. And then uh, for my second ship I just ran I mean pretty 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 cheaply with Weyun, Veril, and uh, I changed out between games because I found a better solu solution. Uh, my better solution was Weyun, Veril, and jammed messages or something like that not fake mess not fake messages jam jammed communications the one from the gorn ship yeah uh before that i was trying the uh the ferengi e impulse but that ended up being too action intensive especially on a ship that i wanted way to be using mm -hmm. so how did it end up going the uh well how, how do you think it ended up going tucker just what would what would your evaluation of my fleet be? Um, here's what I'd say. Um, jammed messages is really 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 good against the really good Klingon build. Uh, my girlfriend discovered that last night. Still won though. So mm. I'm gonna say not very well. That would be my guess. <laughs> All right. So in my fir in the first one we had on Wednesday. I ended up going fourth out of 13 people. And I was really close. I think I could have taken second if it wasn't for some really bad luck and me forgetting to use my Admiral token from uh, month, from month one. Uh, in the first one, everything went, went as planned. I even have my score sheets here. Uh, he actually got a little unlucky. All of his ships were dead on round four. Oh, wow. 
So that gave I had 20 minutes left with my with my sphere and with my apnex. So it only took me four more rounds to get 20 plus more than 20 plus against him. And but uh, and then we had 10 minutes left over in the round. No. So I, I probably could have easily gotten another uh, 30 rounds of shooting in. Because uh, because ba basically what what happens is after the opponent's fleet is gone. All I really have to do is go back and forth, back and forth. I know exactly what action to do it, and I can pile on damage almost as fast as I can roll dice. Uh, for those of you who have seen the claims of 515 damage in one round, uh, I, I guarantee you they are not exaggerated. It is it is possible. It's just harder to do, and your and and your your opponent has to allow it to happen. Yeah, pretty uh, much. So my first round was actually against a newer player, which was actually a problem for me. Because rather than rush in and try to do damage, he tried to play cat and mouse with the cube that didn't move. So one of his ships kind of ran away and uh, wasn't shooting, but it meant that all of my ships were getting shot at because he was the farthest away instead of one of mine. So that was that was a that was a close call, but ended up fine with that one. Uh, the second round, I went up against. Uh, what was that second round of the? What was the second round of this one? I went up against a counterattacking Sung. So between the two of us, we had four ships total. So the Borg started with extra attack dice, which was kind of, uh, which was kind of. No, we had five between us. So I actually left. In most of these games, I flew my blind off the board in the first round. This one I did not because I wanted to screw with his his Sung as much as possible. So I ended up being getting close to the Sung. Stealing, stealing Shelby and disabling high energy sensor sweep. Stealing uh, Tom Paris and disabling Spock, and using my EM pulse at the time to give him to stack like two power tokens on top of him in round one and two. So the first round hurt him quite a bit. However, around round three or four, I believe it was, uh, or was it? No, I think it was actually like round one even. Uh, I thought I could take one shot with... Uh, the Borg would have had five attack dice against my Apnex, and I would have had three defense, two hull, and two shields. So he w if he rolled anything less than four attacks, or, or I rolled any evades, I would have been fine. He rolled four hits, and I rolled zero evades. Well. So that ended up killing Wayun. Uh, the match went to about eight rounds I before he got destroyed at 43 damage points, and then my sphere was the soul, the last survivor. Uh, about a, around round 11, I ended up beating him, and I got to 46 damage points. Uh, asks why fly the blind ship off the board to help ramp up the damage from the cube quicker. Uh, if yeah, I guarantee you that the two damage that your Gavroche is shooting will not help you in this in my particular build. Yeah, it, they're the only time uh, the the Bamoth. One of the things about the Klingon build is that if you get really lucky and get the Bamoth, your damage potential goes through the roof. The Jaeger with Shelby is also just impossible for that board cube to kill early on. But other than that, the blind buy just doesn't contribute that much. Yeah, especially with it doesn't have the backup, so it can't participate in the shuffle, the Federation shuffle. Or ah uh, yes, and. Yeah, it's just really not that good overall. It does make a great target for my assimilation tubules to steal Shelby, though. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Which which did happen in my second event. Uh, the last round for the first OP event, I so I was at win plus one and a basic win. I lost my last round against... It was a Constitution... An, it was another one of our newer players, too. So it was a Constitution, a Miranda, two science vessels that he borrowed from me for the tournament. Uh... The Bamoth blind ship, and I think he was actually running his own Jaeger. That is a previous random event. build. Now, this was not too bad, except for the fact that our game lasted a total of five rounds before going to time. At, after the end of four rounds, we had five minutes left on the clock. I see. Yeah, newer so, player, 10 billion ships. Yeah. Got to check the dials. Let me check the dials again. Is this maneuver actually going to get me by? 
Like, well, even while we were setting up, is like, oh man, you're disrupting my formation. Now I'm going to have to think harder about my moves. And that actually made me want to move my ship to the other side of the board. <laughs> and I think if I hadn't done that, we would have only gotten through four turns. Yeah, you know, it's um true story. I, that actually happened to my girlfriend as well. Um, her last night she played in OP two, and her opponent in round two was entirely focused around disruption, running things like jam communications. He put his ship right in the middle of her formation and caused her to have to move around it the entire game, which just mentally messed with her to the point where they they didn't get more than four or five rounds in themselves. Um, <laughs> Which, by the way, she still won because Klingons. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I ended up losing that one. The game went five rounds. He managed to pile like 82 points of damage on the cube. And mm -hmm. uh, I did manage to get one of his... One, one of these science vessels killed and his two of his other ships down pretty bad. Uh, if we had gone like two or three more rounds, I think I would have been in a much better position. But as it was, you know, we just ran out of time, so he ended up taking that one. Uh, the final, the final score of the night ended up with me having fourth place. The second place was actually the Soong counterattack build, which I thought, yeah. which I, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, he beat me out by one point because he got the bonus. Because he got, I got a, a win, a win plus one, and a loss. He got two win plus ones and a loss. But we both had the highest fleet points of anyone in the fleet because basically in every other game nobody died. I got yeah. I ended up I ended with 300, 300 some odd fleet points and the and second place ended up with three hundred and sixty. So yeah, disruption can help you with those tiebreakers a lot. But they uh, can. But yeah, after seeing the pow the, the six ship build with Denatra and Terrell keeping his, his ships alive. Uh, I switched out the impulse for jammed communications and went over to the next venue, which was on Saturday. Uh, I ended up playing against a three Klingon ship build uh, with like Ducat, Picard, and Natra. I ended up playing against a two Klingon build, which was pretty heavily heavily armed, and be, by being heavily armed, made it very susceptible to Croesus mm -hmm. and superior intellect. So that one was an easy win. I shouldn't say easy win, but it was it, it, it was it played out exactly as I expected it to. Mm -hmm. uh, the second round was against three Klingons who pulled, and he pulled a Jaeger. Uh, he did get a Ooh. lot of damage done, but he we did end up going. Uh, his, his ships lasted till about round six, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't even get the chance to use my tractor beam on him or anything because he he split up his Klingons over here and his Jaeger over there. And silly mm -hmm. me, I put my sphere by the Jaeger so I could steal Shelby when I really should have Ooh. been decloaking the Klingons. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. But I still ended up coming out of that one ahead. Uh, he oh, died around right. turn seven, and then I had uh, more than enough time to pile, I think it was plus 180 damage after uh, be beyond the, the little tokens on the board. Like, we ran out of tokens. So well, can I, I, ask, I, I, can I ask oh you sorry that was round that was round three because I just kept roll I just kept rolling dice because we didn't have anything to do while we were waiting for prizes. Uh, round two was against a uh, three Klingon build I think and I think they he pulled a Gavroche. Uh, because of my he saw my jam communications he ended up splitting up his forces like really far across the board, and uh, he 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 did all right. But his all of his ships did end up end up dying. He had one ship left for a while, but because of my tractor beam, uh, his his Ninatra Apnex was pretty much screwed from the get go. Uh, ended up ended up flying off the board trying to get away from my tractor beam or trying to break out of it. Uh, uh, can can I just ask you a question, Will? Oh yeah, definitely. It sounds like in your venue, um, once your opponent was off the board, you weren't really taking complete turns. Oh no, I was indeed play, taking complete turns. I would, I, I would, uh, I even I set I would set my maneuver dials if I needed to. I would I left the templates on the board, but I did physically move all of my ships back and forth, rotate mm -hmm. my dial for my Borg sphere when I needed to, and then roll the attack dice as necessary. Okay, all right. So I'm so, so yeah. So even without trying to speed through my turns, like a round still only took like twenty seconds. 
20 or 30 seconds at most and that gets kind of that can get kind of silly because when you know what you're doing it's like okay my app next doesn't have to change any maneuvers so all right I flip my app next around I re-enable Wayun. I turn my Borg sphere dial I move the sphere I take my target lock roll dice to attack roll dice to attack disable Wayun. I don't take any damage set my dials again that entire that entire thing just took about as long as I said it did, right 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 when I was just talking there. So, thirty okay. seconds. It's crazy, man. But yeah, I ended oh, up. Taking, right. I did end up taking um, first place at that venue. So, no huge impressed. swarms there, impressed. but I feel like there might be more at our last venue coming up next month. So um, yeah, yeah. That, that's very interesting to me because around here, uh, it's really been the three Klingon bill that's been that's been taking most of the events. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think that jammed communications is probably your best meta card against that. And um, it sounds like, an, I, I mean, obviously I didn't see the game. I don't think your round two opponent should have split up his ships. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's interesting. Um, with that said, though, um, the uh, the only non-faction pure venue around here uh, just made a house rule that if you're doing Borg, uh, you have to be faction pure and you can't use a resource. <laughs> so that may be why the Klingons are doing so well, um, because it's mostly faction pure around here. Gotcha. Yeah, they're trying to. They're thinking about doing that around here. And we've, yeah. we've, been, we've been talking about it, doing some it, doing some tests and things. Well, I would say faction pure is probably enough of a restriction. I mean, the resource thing is just awful. <laughs> I need a flagship. Give me my battle stations and con. Or, or, or even just a fleet captain. Like, it's really ridiculous how much that, uh, that affects uh, the board. Because it's also... If you have one board fleet your ship in your fleet at all, you can't use a resource. Gotcha. So I, I I do not like that rule. Hmm. Um, I don't but know. I like, think that. Sorry. I was gonna say te we were testing out that restriction earlier against you know just just a generalized fleet, not a specifically anti board fleet. Mm -hmm. And the two my two sphere build with the two sphere with the. Uh, assimilation tubules, and, one with tubules and one with the tractor beam, and both with tra with tac drones. I believe that came out to like almost exactly under points. I mean, that still did wonders against just general builds. Like the 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 Keldon classes, of course, are completely useless against it. Mm -hmm. And even even things like the the Valdor have a hard time keeping up. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um. I don't know. It's just resources at this point are such a huge part of fleet building that mm, it just puts a bad taste in my mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. But yeah, so we're we're probably going to keep testing different ways to change it. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to try we were going to try is instead of restricting the cards, which I don't think really does that much to Borg. It just mm -hmm. it, it makes them more predictable in what they will bring, but mm -hmm. I don't think it makes them any less powerful that by that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to do is try to stick, j make, make it so they have a 180 degree firing arc. Just that. And see how that works. Well, that's interesting. That that's might, that might make test. a big difference. Yeah, because you can't, because from a after that you cannot sidestep a fleet or else you'll, at least you'll still, still won't be getting a shot at them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, that's a thing. Uh, let's see. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I had for that. Uh, yep. Questions from chat. Does feedback pulse damage the Borg cube in OP2? Yes, no. it, technically it does, but it does not count as damage that you dealt. It counts as damage that the Borg dealt, so I would not count on that. Yeah, effectively no. Effectively no. It does cancel an attack, which is useful sometimes, but I have not seen a TO rule that it counts for your own damage thus far, and I've been to about four or five different venues at this point. Yep. So there's that. Uh, Bane of Borg asks, how do you think a double sphere build with Ducat and Picard will do an OP2? Um, that actually runs a lot like the Federation shuffle. Uh, you get into range 3 and you just go back and forth or side to side. 
So for the most part, I don't think you're worrying too much about damage to your ships. It's the matter of if you can keep up with damage on somebody else. Uh, so six dice, six di two times six dice with target lock and battle stations every turn. I mean, you're, I think you're looking pretty consistently at, if not 12 hits between them, probably probably 11 or 10, and you'll probably get at least a crit in there. So let's, let's, let's say it averages out at 11, plus your two from your bonus, so 13 damage a turn. Uh, I still think that there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of the swarmy builds, like the three Klingon or the four Federation, will still consistently put out about 16 to 16 to 20 points a turn if you don't do anything to disrupt them. Uh, what do you think, Tucker? Yeah, um, I, I I would be willing to bet that three Klingons will beat you. You can probably beat the three uh, the Fed Shuffle. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Borg Shuffle cross faction with Picard and Ducat is better than the uh, Fed Shuffle. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think you'll beat Klingons unless you play really, really fast. Yeah, because um, because they're the other ships will probably be dying sooner than you are. What you really what you really hope for is that one of their ships like remains on the board and doesn't do as much damage, and you can catch up in that in that in that span of time yeah but, uh, you'll be playing catch up against higher damage builds so if the game doesn't go quickly you're screwed mm -hmm. is it viable yes oh yeah definitely so let me let me it, it, how many points is that right there we're looking at uh six. Oh, close to 90 all right we only do get 90 and you i guess you just still have your blind ship i don't think the blind ship's going to add much to you though I would fly the blind ship off the board so that your opponent gets hit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if they're running low damage, low, low damage ships. The more the more ships that of theirs that can get destroyed before they start before the cubes start shooting at you, the better. Uh, correct. And especially especially if you can try find some way to disrupt their well. I don't know if I want to even take that back now. If you can find ways to disrupt their formation, the problem is that they might be taking far longer turns than you. Right? Yeah. It's 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 a call. It's a call. Um, mm -hmm. it's not as it, it is not as cut and dried as some builds. But if what if it's what you want to run, I would say go for it. It's going to have excellent die quality. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be better if you could fit counterattack on there somehow. But uh. Hmm. Silly. Hmm. True enough. All right, I believe that is everything. That's all the questions in chat. Uh, we did go, we did end up going a little bit over, but I hope you'll forgive us for the technical difficulties earlier. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, any closing things, Tucker? Oh, hold on, one more question. Three D seven with independent Klingon flagship Worf, Terrell, Gowron, and the Natra. One, two, three, four. Oh, gotcha. Four ship Klingons. Eh? I think it I'd dies rather, a little too quickly. What do you think, Tucker? Yeah. I'd, I, speaking as somebody who ran uh, Klingons like this, I would really rather run three Vorches. It, four D7s just die way too fast, even with Terrell. Yeah, because that, that's four hit points total with two defense dice, maybe three. If yeah, you, if you, versus... Versus, you know, seven if you're not cloaked, you know, like. Mm hmm Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you'll get a lot of the attack dice, but I don't think you'll last long enough. So, there's yeah, that. your ships will just die too quickly. That's cool. All right, so anything, any final words from you, Tucker, for the for close out the night? You're welcome. Nope. Again, you. folks, sorry for the connection troubles. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was an adventure, uh, but, uh, thanks for putting up with it, and I apologize for any quality issues that might have caused. Cool. But, yeah, uh, so next week, Tucker, are you going to be out of town? Uh, not for sure. I'll talk to you about that, uh, after the show. All right. But next week, then, we'll probably be talk looking into the start of OP3, since that is rapidly approaching us. Ooh, and we've already and gone through all the previews, so 
Well, well did that. we? Because as of today, Terry of that Terry girl has 5,000 subscribers. Oh, we might be having some assimilation target prime to be looking into. Yes, we very well might. That would be lots of fun. Mm -hmm. And maybe we get to look at Crazy Beard Riker. Oh, man, I'm so excited for Crazy Beard Riker. Crazy Beard Riker! We love you! All right. Cool. All right, guys, this has been State of the Federation for August 19th. Make sure you, uh, if you're on Facebook, find us and like us. It's just facebook.com slash state of the Federation. We are on YouTube and here on Twitch. Uh, my username here is Delta Angel Fire, usually with an underscore in the middle. But maybe not. And, yeah, tell your friends, go out, go out and win, and make you be generous with your dice, eh? All right. You guys have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Night. If I can, where did my mouse go? I don't know how to stop the show. Oh, God, we're here forever. Ah! <laughs>